Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition here on Labor Day, September 6, 2021. For those that know and don't know, in the science fiction world, Star Trek Week has begun. So there's a lot of stuff to check out on the internet. We might even have a few things going on on this channel, so just stay tuned. Of course, if you're following us on any of the channels, we do appreciate the likes, the follows, and if you have any comments, you know we show them on screen. If you have any questions when the time comes, we'll get to it. But what a glorious and beautiful weekend it was. I hope it's going well for everyone. Of course, I am co-hosting tonight, and actually it's going to be even a bit more informal. We have three co-hosts together because we're going to be doing this together. It's going to be more of a conversation. You know me. I talk too much. I'm Roger. That's Michael Day, who's probably responsible for you this evening. Would you not say that, Michael? <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> but it is still very much appreciated, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a very special guest right now. Michael, I am afraid I did not ask our guest for the correct pronunciation. And I know it's, it's very common, but I'm going to butcher it. Michael, please, I'm putting you on the spot. Would you introduce our guest? Yes. Our guest tonight is Connor McCullough. Uh, he, if ever, anyone remembers, about ten years ago, Connor, um, yeah, first awesome. season of first season of Face Off, Connor was the winner of that reality show, and that's the first time I saw Connor, and I was very impressed with his work. And then about a year later, I got to meet him at Con Carolinas, and I saw his work in person, and it was like, whoa. Um, and I am so excited that he agreed to come on tonight and just um, talk about his career and maybe some of the new projects he's been up to before um, he was on Face Off and all of the ones he's done after. So I'm excited. Definitely, as I am as well. Connor, we have a genuine artist here. You are, and we've teased it. We've talked about you doing something some people know when you were on the program and they're making the connection. Why don't you, t why don't you give us a tea? Well, no, not even. <laughs> Tell us what it is that you do, please, Connor. Um, I create uh, character prosthetics for film and television. So it's altering people's appearances, creating, you know, sometimes it's, it could be something as simple as wounds. Other times it could be a completely, you know, it can be a inhuman, a zombie, vampire, you know, that kind of thing. Which do you prefer to do? What's your favorite transformation to do? I, I really anything anything that's like creating any character creation um, I enjoy because um, and we all do we all seem to do a certain amount. I mean I can't speak for everybody, but um, I've always had to do a certain amount of gore, right? And like gore has its own challenges, and you can certainly do it wrong. Um, but what I really enjoy is is creating something like you know it, it, whether it be an old age makeup or just you know or just you know changing someone's identity um, or maybe it's an alien um, anything like that I find more gratifying and more challenging. Yeah, because um, I remember they made you do a lot of creatures on Face Off, if I remember correctly and changing yeah. people's appearance yeah i mean that's what it was all about um and uh and yeah it was it was a good uh i, I did like the way they you know split it up you know we did animals first then body painting then aliens and so on um that that was it, it was a good way to kind of show your range mm -hmm. now um before before face off i think you told me that you worked in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I spent 14 years in Los Angeles before um, before moving to the East Coast. And and eventually by uh, by 2010, I was teaching down in uh, Orlando. And that's when uh, the face off audition uh, came to us. And uh, I saw it was an open call. So I tried out. That is cool. That is cool. Um, current projects that you're working on, is there anything that you can talk about or 
No. <laughs> um, what can I talk about? Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually really excited about um, a project I'm starting this month, but I haven't even signed the paperwork yet, so I can't. Well, so we better not talk about that. But so, yeah. yeah. So people yeah. just look on your pages and maybe they'll see something. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, eventually. Um, because the last, I mean, the last thing I worked on that has seen the light of day, um, I mean, I, I did help out some, you know, some background work and so on on Loki, but that wasn't, you know, uh, my friend uh, Douglas Snow was the department head on that. Um, and we did get to do some fun stuff, but uh, but yeah, no, like no, nothing too complex. Um, before that, you know, it was pre-pandemic. Um, the last show, the last series I finished right before lockdown was um, Hellstrom, which on Hulu. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet, but that's, no, not, no, that's not one I'm familiar with. But yeah, um, but uh, Loki, yes. <laughs> well, it was Hellstrom. Yeah. Hellstrom was um, uh, the kind of the dark uh, side of Marvel. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Hellstrom and his sister Satana, but they didn't call her that in the show. Um, yeah, they were like dark, dark heroes. Like I think, like they may have been part of the Midnight Sun series with Marvel. You know, it's a shame that that doesn't show up on your IMDb yet. I don't know who fills in IMDb because I've only, <laughs> I've only gone in there and and uh, uh, like listed like maybe three, four credits top. So I don't even know who does that. Um, I understand that it's a community similar to Wikipedia where people will update it that it has to be verified and they are constantly searching for the owners and the agents uh, okay. to take over the accounts to update. But I don't have a, a certain answer as well because I surprisingly have an IMDB account which is mm -hmm merged with another Roger Norier and that person has one credit and I have like five other credits but they're all like production credits or something but it, I, I don't have a 100% a answer on that mm. but what is on your IMDB is rather extensive uh, I imagine you have quite a bit more you have 40 credits on IMDB and I thought it was wow. interesting uh, yeah <laughs> you didn't even know huh? that's, yeah. that's a lot <laughs> the one that surprised me the most is because I went with, uh, of course, with the family to go see the movie. But then I remembered, well, yeah, that's right. They did have live action and Osmosis Jones. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Bill Murray's in that one, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed the movie. My, my kids did as well. My youngest was, uh, I believe, uh, four or five at the time. My oldest, of course, would have been three years older. And that was a fun movie. But again, looking at your credits, that's, that's a cartoon. Oh, right, right. There's live action. Connor, what, what what did you do on that one? I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. Um, I, and, you know, I'll, I'm happy to go into a few things we did on that. But um, the funny thing about that, it's funny that I've got a credit because I'm not credited in the film. Oh, and well, it's interesting. I apologize. It does say special makeup effects artist dash uncredited yeah so so i go yeah i go out there and um actually let me you know fast forward to and watching the movie in the theater with uh one of my best friends i was in vancouver visiting and we went and saw it and um we're going through the credits and it's a long list of credits it was a big credits list and yeah. it's going and going and going and it just keeps going and and we're getting to, you know, you know, post-production services and so on. My best friend starts laughing. And then all of a sudden it says special makeup effects by Tony Gardner and who I worked for at the time. Uh, but, but like I was the only person on set and, and a lot of the, <laughs> I, I was stuck in Plymouth, Massachusetts for three weeks um, by myself. And, oh, and and one other guy that was um, operating that we had a giant exploding zit for the scene where Bill Murray's zit explodes. Um, we did have that, but the, the rest of the makeups, he's like, I did Bill Murray's ingrown toenail. 
and Bill Murray's forehead zit and all that stuff was just done out of the kit. And uh, so when I didn't even get a credit for it, I was just like, wow, <laughs> thanks. That was some good stuff, especially the <laughs> zit, man. It was rather funny. Uh, it, it turned out well. So you actually had quite a bit of work for being uncredited. Uh, very quickly, I want to give a shout out. We're already receiving several likes. We already have a comment. Maggie Sisti thought it was very cool. Uh, the likes, thank you, Peter Gama, aforementioned Maggie Sisti, Victoria Avalon, Randy Landers, Eric Ogle, and Brady Dearden. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, fire them off in the chat room. Please let us know, and uh, we'd love to ask Connor as we move forward. But uh, please, uh, Connor, please continue. I have a bad habit of interrupting. I'm sorry. Oh no! I mean that that was that was the bulk of it. But well, as far as what I yeah what I did. Uh... So yeah, the um, Tony Gardner shop made the giant zit, and um, and Film Illusions made this air mortar behind it to to fire the matter. Um, but it was one of those things where like it didn't it didn't work the way we hoped it would when we got there, and I ended up having to uh, come up with something else. I'm like, what can I do? What, what can come out of this mortar that's going to look like a big pus ball? And uh, I ended up, I ended up getting a, a Nerf soccer ball, and pe you know peeling peeling up the skin on the surface, and just to make it random and and textured. And then I I got Vaseline and some of my some of my grease paint, and made a pus color in the Vaseline. No, not Vaseline, caulking, silicone caulking. And I mixed I mixed the grease paint in with the caulking and smeared it all over and made this giant ball of pus I was able to stick order so that it was kind of an airtight seal and it would really blow out of the what, what was the head of the zit good times uh, yeah it, it looked great on scene we don't know how it's done and this is really cool to know Connor we did not ask and I do apologize uh, your Instagram account may we borrow a few of those images to show them on screen right now or as we go through the program Absolutely. And if there are any in particular that you want to talk about, uh, yeah, let me know. I'm sure we'd be able to find them. I believe Michael did send some over to me. If not, we're just going to be asking about some of the stuff that we did get uploaded. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, again, if you feel free to ask about anything. Um, the most, My most recent posts um, are a, a mutant makeup I designed, actually. Is this it right here? Yeah, that one. Um, that is neat, man. It was just something I wanted to do. I wanted to mess around with a couple uh, ideas I had about um, creating, you know, creating a transparent prosthetic, and uh, and then just doing something crazy on top just to make it interesting. And uh, I, I came I came up with this a couple years ago, and just work and everything else had stopped me from uh, completing it and. A couple weeks ago, I finally just, I had no more excuses. I was ready to go. And uh, we went ahead and did the application. This is the same one, right? Just from the side yeah. view? Yes, that's his right side. Wow. Got a little uh, parasitic twin. <laughs> Here, is that a tear in the eye? <laughs> no, it's just really glossy. Okay. And then there's a third image that you have right here, and I believe that's everyone working on the team, of course, right? Yes, uh, that's Bill McCoy in the middle, good friend of mine. Um, he was uh, shooting video and stills for us uh, that day. And uh, that's my other half, Megan, um, who helped me with the application. It's cool. Hey, Megan. She might be watching. Who knows? Megan, if you're oh. watching. <laughs> she, she, yeah, she's upstairs. Uh, we, have, we have a guest. So, um, oh. yeah, so that's why she won't be joining us this evening. Well, I do apologize in that we took you guys away from your guests this evening. Oh, but we thank oh, you for spending good. it with us. All good. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to give another shout out to Jacob Hayes, Tony Kanopka. They're in the chat room. Folks, for everyone in the chat room, let us know who you are and where you hail from. We would love to uh, have you guys let us know where you are. Oh, there it is. Uh, I think we have a comment. Uh, look at that. Tony Kanopka. That's awesome. The work there is amazing. Uh, well, do you want to? 
you want to give us, you know, we're, we're rookies when it comes to this. How long does it take to do something like this? Well, again, this, this was something that was, um, the, it, it was very multi-tiered as far as the things I incorporated into it. It wasn't just something I sculpted, made, a, you know, made a mold and, uh, ran a silicone. I had to, um, I had to separate the dome of the head, um, for two reasons. Um, one was to make the, you know, the inner kind of pulsating tumors or whatever you want to call them. Um, and then, um, second to make this clear dome, uh, that is separate from the other silicone. Cause, um, the, the clear silicones just don't have the plasticity, um, that our prosthetic grade silicones do. Uh, so I had to make them out of, you know, two different mediums and hope that they were going to work together. Wow. So yeah, you can but... see where it gets kind of dark and all the purpley veins that that's actually if you, uh, anyone that goes onto my Instagram can see the video where that's actually transparent and you see the, uh, the pulsating tumors underneath. And would you give us your Instagram account? Oh, uh, uh, here, let me confirm that. That's, uh, yeah, Connor underscore McCullough underscore designs. Excellent. Yes. If you don't mind, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to have that running uh, as a ticker on the bottom. Okay. That way we don't have to uh, repeat it. And if you have any other websites, obviously. Glad. Uh, there it is. Instagram.com forward slash Connor underscore McCullough underscore designs. Wow. Yeah, um, I do have a website. Um, it's it's not as up to date as my Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's. Um, Oops, I just switched design. it on you. Sorry. <laughs> What's that? Oh. I switched it on. Yeah, that's. that's oh, the, there it is. That's the web page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you put the other one back up, Roger? <laughs> Of course. We can okay. have both of them going at the same uh, time. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, uh, as I was saying, um, this was meant to be, uh, originally meant to be a, a demo makeup for the IMATS trade shows. And when I do those, and it, it's, I, I've only done three, um, but when I do them, I always, I always try to challenge myself. I want to bring something that is somehow new or hopefully innovative to, to a makeup design. And, uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes wow. some well, based on what you have, the stuff looks absolutely awesome. You've done, uh, a, a lot of work in stuff that we know. Greyhound. Is that the one with, uh, Tom Hanks? on apple yeah um oh wow. i was i was only on that very briefly uh i was working with uh my good friend and colleague mike marino um that was that was his gig essentially and um we were actually him and i we were working on three shows and like going like new jersey arkansas louisiana alabama uh for like two weeks and and yeah greyhound was was one of our was being shot in uh was it baton rouge i believe oh wow okay what did you have to do on that one it's a contemporary story while well, historical it, uh, it was, what was your assignment there it was a scene on a submarine and i'm trying to remember what part of this guy was bleeding out um i can't even remember what was bleeding but he was bleeding oh. Because we were, we had a blood, yeah, you know, big blood syringe going. Um, it was, uh, I, and I'm not kidding. It was such a crazy two weeks. Yeah, I, I don't even remember exactly what what the injury was. But we were doing like we were shooting that, and um, the fanatic in um, in Alabama, and True Detective in Arkansas. Oh, and then wow. and then and then Mike Shop was in is in New Jersey, so we it was it was a crazy time. Yeah, and I noticed that none of that, at what you just mentioned, none of that is on uh, your IMDb. So 
I, Michael and I were speaking briefly. He says, those are the 40 credits that we know of. We were certain there's quite a bit more because you've done the Hunger Games. Hunger Games, uh, well, uh, it has you as the Hunger Games. And then on Mockingjay Part 1 and 2, you also did The Vampire Diaries, uh, Outcast, which was a TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, Stan Helsing. I'm not familiar with that one. I mean, we know the character is Van Helsing. So who is Stan Helsing? <laughs> uh, Dan Helsing was one of those uh, spoofs where they just kind of make fun of all kinds of pop culture. Um, I, I, I honestly don't remember what I did on that. Um, I was working for Todd Masters. And again, yeah. it was one of those situations where we were working on all, we were all working on multiple projects. So uh, I, I don't know what it was I did that ended up in Stan Helsing. They have you listed as a prosthetic artist. And I believe this is the way you were listed in the credits. I already know. As, uh, right. Connor, can I borrow some stuff, McCullough? <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I have no idea what that means. Um, that was, uh, apparently that was a bit of humor on the part of Todd Masters. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, just, I wasn't let in on the joke. Mm. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Have you asked him ever or not? I have never remembered to ask him. <laughs> uh, this is interesting, man. I, uh, as a quick little story, uh, and now I find this even funnier, I told Michael that I went out with someone to see a movie, and uh, we're watching previews, and I'm enjoying the previews, and then a certain preview comes up, and the person that I'm with is just dying laughing. And I've just got my hands like this crossed, and I'm like, Okay, there's going to be no connection right here whatsoever. And this is for Jackass, <laughs> which you have a credit on, the uh, Jackass the movie. So I find it interesting that, all right, I have another Jackass connection right here. What did you do on that one? It says you're a, you are a makeup artist, 16 millimeter film unit as Connor P. McCullough. Um, so there's a, there's a couple sequences in the first film uh, where – the um, the cast are in old age makeups. <laughs> that was, well, it was Tony Gardner again. I was uh, still working for him at the time. It was uh, you know his crew, and um, and I was one of you know one of the application artists and one of the guys in the shop making old age prosthetics. And I'm actually in the movie for half a beat um, when they're doing when you're seeing the makeup artists. The, putting on their prosthetics you see me in a in a tie-dye shirt and a bandana <laughs> it was oh. thousand that's funny we're gonna have to check that out yes yeah <laughs> that is cool uh you you have quite a bit more imagery and uh if you don't mind michael did give us some uh i don't know where this is but this looks really cool this is uh let me remove uh the web um, darn it. The banner. I apologize. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? All right. Yeah, okay. There you go. Wow. So, this is from Hellstrom, the TV show I was oh, talking about. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a, you know, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a story behind this. Um, the the character um was played by Daniel Cudmore, who was uh, Colossus in the uh, like first like three X-Men movies, or two, uh, I think part two and three or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, that was Daniel. He was playing a character that, well, that we knew as Meat Market. I don't think they ever used the name in the show. Um, and I was, uh, I was actually key um, makeup effects on this. I was working for the late Bill Terazakis, um, Bill was one of my closest friends in the business and he passed away like just a couple months ago. Um, and, uh, this was, this, a lot of this was his design work and just, you know, me doing, uh, a, a lot of the execution, a lot of the sculptures and molds and so on. Um, but it was, it was also his crew. Like, you know, we, he, he has a, he had a big shop in Vancouver and, uh, and, you know, a lot of help. But yeah, that was uh, a lot of that was me and Bill. 
Wow, that's impressive stuff, man. Jeez. Just, uh, just the images that we have right here. Um, wow, you mentioned this. Uh, this is what you do. Wow. Hmm. Now, is there a person in there or? Yep. Is... Yes. Um, this is from a movie um, that Megan and I did back in 2015 called Faceless. Um, I don't know if it was ever released, um, but uh, this was, yeah, it was a, the whole movie's about like facial transplant surgery and so on. And this is a uh, actually a dream sequence where, you know, the guy's just imagining himself getting a, a new face put on him. Hmm. Yeah, there's uh, another one I was going to get to because I was uploading those. And then on this one, and you have a series of images there, which I'm going to upload them in a moment. But uh, the wounds yeah, here are significant, man. <laughs> that, uh, that, again, is uh, Daniel Cudmore from Hellstrom. And okay. that's the, the first time we see him in the show. You have this one, and you have that. Wow. Yeah, same makeup. And uh, that's a close up. Yeah. Now, just like, how long did it take you to apply this each day that you had to? I'm assuming you had to redo it every day to, you know, um, to, for the no, prosthetics. That, that, that makeup played, I believe, twice because uh, his character heals. You know, obviously, these crazy things happen. That that what we saw in that earlier picture was he, he consumes people by his like his ribs kind of open up. And then you see these multiple rows of shark teeth. Um, mm. uh, there was also a digital element. So when you go past the, the gray area in the stomach, um, the rest is is digital, right? So oh. it looks like this vortex of teeth. Um, and uh, yeah, so so yeah, he heals that wound on his face, heals up. It, it appears again later on as like a lot of cracks on the side. Um, yeah, he's, you know, he's kind of immortal. So to create an effect like this, what what do you have to do? I'm not necessarily referencing time or anything, but what are some of the materials that you use? Because we, you know, we joke about it. We call it mustard, ketchup, and stuff like that. Mm. What What is it? Um, so, you know, modern day prosthetics are, you know, um, essentially the... the easiest way to break it down is we will take an impression of whichever actor that we're going to be working on ideally um, so that we can create something that is custom something that fits you know them and essentially only them um, it's the whole purpose of, of customizing the piece so that it you know it, it fits the way it's supposed to um, and Beyond, uh, so uh, you know, once once we have an impression of the of the actor or model, um, we design it in clay. We start, you know, we just start throwing clay on and creating, you know, creating the anatomy essentially. And um, you know, we have to make a mold of that, which is you know, in, in either stone or epoxy um, or urethanes. And um, and from the we now have a two piece mold. We have the actor's face and you know a basically a negative a representation of the sculpture we did we'll fill it with silicone rubber and that gives you in a nutshell the piece you want to glue down to the actor that makes sense oh of course it does yes uh it was very clear i was able to follow along i've seen a few specials on the document i'm, I'm one of those that if i get the dvd or the blu-ray and they have the uh specials i check them out but uh, they're just showing you what they're doing. They're not describing it. Right. And well, and that, that's that's what got me into it, too. Right? The, behind the scenes. The, yeah. The, um, probably the most, in, one of the most influential just being the, um, I remember, if you guys remember in the 80s, um, you could rent making Michael Jackson's Thriller. Right? It was this whole, like, 45 minute whatever documentary about making that video 
Yeah, I rented that right. out at my video store back yeah. then. Yeah, I and remember. there's that whole bit of, you know, Rick <laughs> Baker and his crew designing the dancers, you know, zombie makeups and creating the transformation of Michael Jackson into the, uh, the Panther Man and so on. Um, that was gold for someone like me who was just looking for anything. You know, to anything I can get my hands on, like any any better understanding of how it's done, because I had no idea. Did you did you go to school for this, Connor, or did you learn a lot um, at first yourself by looking at stuff like that, or combination? Um, no, I, I definitely started um, on my own steam. Um, I was uh, yeah, you know, I was still in high school and. I had started taking it coincidentally. I I had started taking ceramics class right around the same time I was developing an interest in the concept of makeup effects, um, and I didn't realize in the moment that like how how much the two gelled, right? And all of a sudden, um, the the ceramics classroom in my high school became my my effect shop, and and thankfully um, my ceramics teacher who was amazing um he gave me free reign and, you know he he was he was grading me on my creativity and he just let me do what i wanted to do and he actually took my first life cast like of me um he did it we we both learned um through uh through a book i had techniques of three-dimensional makeup um i got my hands on that and we we went over it and he he cast my face hmm. How'd you get your first break? I know you started there in school. I guess that's when you got the love of it. But how'd you make the jump to Hollywood? How'd that happen? Well, um, my first my first break essentially uh, was a um, an independent film in Vancouver called Extra Two, and um, you know, I can even uh, show you the poster. Oh wow! It's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. And uh, that, that, that was my start. I, I was, again, I was, in, I was still in Vancouver. I was 19 years old. And I was working for um, the late uh, Tibor Farkas, uh, who was one of the, well, was the only person at the time who had an effect shop in Vancouver. And then that led you to... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so it, uh, shortly thereafter, and this is, of course, after I'd gone to makeup school and so on, uh, already before I did this film. Um, after this film, um, I, I just I saved my money. I was working in a warehouse. I was driving a forklift, and I just saved my money, and then I, I eventually made the move in 91 uh, to L.A., and I was there for 14 years. And working yeah. mostly mostly freelance, um, all the you know private effect shops in the valley. Yeah, out there, it's and there's quite a bit here in Hollywood, man. Uh, like I say, looking at your IMDb, uh, I enjoyed all of the Hunger Game uh, movies. Uh, were you in all? Let's see, there was uh, four of them, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, what would yeah. what you have to do with that at the Hunger Games? Well, I I didn't work on Catching Fire. Okay, um, that's the second one. Yeah, yeah, I, I was omitted in that one, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, so again, this is this is uh, post Face Off, and um, and uh, quite by surprise, um, V Neil invited me to work on the film, and and I think uh, you know she, uh, she knew that I was actually um, you know. Uh, North Carolina resident, even though I was still in uh, Orlando at the time. And um, so when that happened, I actually, I, I packed up and left Orlando and, you know, moved back into my house in Charlotte and started working on Hunger Games. And um, it was a great experience. I was so, so as far as my contribution, um, I was, I was third. So it was, you know, V was department head, Nicoletta Scarlatos was key, and I was third. Um, so I would do, I mean, I'd do a lot of basic makeups most of the time. Um, and, you know, so, you know, whatever, distressed look, you know, dirt and so on, um, if need be. 
uh, I also did, um, you know, Josh Hutchinson's um, camouflage makeups, where he camouflages his arm into the tree and his face oh, into yeah. the stone. Um, now these were based on um, th these were based on designs and test makeups that V Neil had previously done, and you know we kind of you know she kind of came up with the method and then um and then i took it from there and you know created these these looks with um with actual clay i figured it was a good idea well again v neil's idea but it it seemed it's, it, it made sense to you use you know something that you think you might find i mean you don't want to start trying to sculpt with real mud so we made uh like a couple different colored clays really soft clays that aren't going to dry out. I mixed uh, glycerin into them so that they wouldn't dry out and crack and, um, and sculpted the look onto, you know, onto his, uh, Josh's skin and then just airbrushed it. Yeah. The effect was absolutely awesome. Uh, I remember that when, uh, she's passing over, well, it's not the waterfalls, but right there and wherever it was, it actually was uh, right by the waterfalls. Okay, it was. Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you cannot see until the camera focuses in on him. It was really well done. So were you... Obviously, you were on set, right, doing that? Yes, yes. That was... Um, was that? that was in Georgia, right? No, that was North Carolina, the first one. Okay. Um, and we were shooting... Uh, all, a lot of that was up at uh, DuPont Falls. Did I lose you? No, no, no we're, we're both thinking, well, oh, where sorry, is that? Cut out no, no. <laughs> yeah, I think we were. I was like, okay. Where is that? <laughs> um, yeah, did, did DuPont Falls, it was like uh, somewhere like driving from Charlotte up toward Asheville, somewhere in there. Um, beautiful area, beautiful park. And, um, but I'll tell you a little story um, real quick. Uh, so I'm finishing up, I'm doing final touches on Josh's look as he's blended into this rock, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, um, the director literally walked up, stood on the rock, stood on the very rock that Josh has blended into, and looks down and goes, okay, so we need to put a body here. And, <laughs> and Josh does this and looks up at him and he jumps back. And he's like, oh my God, I had, you're, you're already there. And we're like, yeah, we, we, I just finished the makeup. <laughs> It is cool. so and you know what? No, go ahead. I, I found an image. I was going to say, that was the best compliment I could have gotten. He just he didn't even see Josh laying right in front of him. That is so cool. I Oh, man, I can't believe it. I'm not quick enough. I found that image. I'm trying to upload it right now. And uh, I made the mistake of downloading way too many images. Um, we're probably going to be on the third question by then. Yeah. <laughs> oh embarrassing well the old man's gonna find it eventually yeah you're, yeah you, you, you do. Uh, I will but then you went at, you didn't do catching fire and then you went and did mocking J one and two and your credits uh, on IMDB for mocking J uh, part one your key makeup artist and then for the second one uh, we, they also have you as a key makeup artist yeah uh, what's the question? Uh, on there, did you? Do, is it the same thing that you did in uh, Hunger Games, or what did you have to do? Well, obviously you didn't do the same effects. What did you have to do in those movies? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, they, they well, the as far as titles go, um, V and uh, Nicoletta were like shared a department head title, um, so they were kind enough to make me their key. Um, but uh, as far as my contribution, um, most of what I did was Evan Ross's makeup because he had to have um, tattoos and piercings and ear prosthetics every day. So his was one of the longer, well, it was absolutely the, like, um, his makeup took a while. And of course, Natalie Dormer's makeup took some time as well because she had the, uh, the, the viney tattoos down the side of her head. But... Um, V did her makeup. And, um, and I finally found it. Oh my goodness, how embarrassing. Yeah. There it is. There That's it is. the one that we were talking about. Yes. 
Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, it just took me forever. I apologize. Yeah, all good. Now, his mouth, is that that's his real mouth that was open, or was that yeah. something that you had done? Okay. No, like, he, if you just picture, like, he just laid, like, and put his head up against the rock, and I just took, like, I took that clay I told you about, and I just literally smeared that into the rock and then just brought the rock colors down into his face. So basically, after you did that, he could not move for a while. I'm Correct. He, he, yeah, he was there for uh, at least two hours. Ooh. <laughs> but he was comfortable. Sure. Did you give an air <laughs> mattress underneath there or something so he could... Oh. <laughs> he just laid there. But, I, I mean, Josh, Josh is such a... a, a great person i just he's such a nice guy he's so great to work with um yeah and i i never heard him complain about a thing what was the vibe uh for the set of the movies well actually there was a different vibe in mockingjay it hit big but how about for the first one i know your involvement you explained it to us but what was the expectation was you know what was your expectation for this movie um going into it i knew absolutely nothing about the hunger games and i also didn't know who jennifer lawrence was um now as she was you know at the time she was 20 years old but she had already been nominated for an oscar and uh and yeah and i just you know i just wasn't aware and um and yeah obviously i mean it turned out to be you know a great experience overall and again such a you know, such a, a great cast. Like, just really, you know, just really great people to work with. Um, what, um, what other, what other movies have been some of your favorites to work on? Either you enjoyed it, or you ended up learning new stuff that maybe from some other designers that you just had no idea how they did it, and you go, oh, you know, and and you built built on that. Multiple uh, question, yeah. but you know. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's it's actually really valid the way you worded it because um, you know different different projects uh, can be very rewarding for very different reasons, right? So one of the my favorite uh, filmmaking experiences was a low budget vampire movie called Southern Gothic, which didn't really you know go anywhere. Um, but I just, I really enjoyed this, the experience itself. It was just a fun project to work on. And, and the production treated me like I was a star of the film. Um, but another great experience I had was um, Oz the Great and Powerful. Um, again, I was hmm. in that particular, in that show, like I was you know, very low on the totem pole. That was um, Howard Berger and K&B. And I was one of 30 artists working on the show. But it was, it was great. Like, there was no stress, and you know we always had enough time to do our makeups. And um, I was working with some some great people: uh, Stefan Dupuy, um, Dave Dupuy, Howard Berger, uh, some some real talent. Uh, Jamie Kelman was right beside me. His station was beside mine for three months. Um, so it was just it was just a very positive experience and it was it was you know it was arguably fun which i really never you i never use that word to describe filmmaking but that one i i definitely had fun on it and uh uh ozzy alvarez was there uh yeah just danny wagner like just so many talented people um and yeah it was just it was just great being part of it it was so huge, you know. Yeah, that was in 2013. That was a Disney, generally under the Disney banner, right? There was always a little bit of money to play with, right? <laughs> I mean, I you know, again, I was a very low man on the totem pole on that one, but uh, we certainly uh, we certainly banked a lot of cash on it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we, we have some other images. Are there any that you want to get to in particular? Or I, I have these two, uh, this one uh, and this one, yes. Yeah, uh, I 
created this uh, during uh, during the lockdown. <laughs> I was oh, wow. uh, I was trying to think of uh, what am I going to do to uh, make money, and um, I never I never got it molded. Um, you know the people uh, like no one was really beating down my door to get a copy of this. So um, so it's still it's still in my studio. It's I it's still in you know in its sculpture uh, in its clay form. I haven't molded it yet, and maybe one of these days I'll get around to it. <laughs> it's another image. There's a close up. Wow. So this is just something you just came up with. That's it. It's not required for any movie, any project, nothing, right? Well, no. I mean, obviously, it's Freddy Krueger, um, but uh, it's it's just yeah, it's just my take on it. Um, wow. And actually, again, I think I think you can see it on my Instagram page. But if you were to turn it around, uh, in the back is like Pat Lowe uh, with a with a. Um, basically a a, a, a a scene from Elm Street 3 with the Freddy snake bursting up out of the floor and Patricia Arquette in a nightgown um, I just thought it would be interesting to to do like kind of a little homage to to that scene in the movie because the snake was so iconic yeah that's absolutely awesome uh, Michael Thank you. Yeah, I'm just trying to grab. There's something. I don't, did we do this one? If we did this one, it's my brain is not working. But sure. I did we do that one? No, no, no. I mean, can you? Th this scares me to death. Um, OK, so uh, this piece was a display I made for uh, the first Georgia IMATS. Um, Interestingly, um, the original sculpture I started during a uh, tropical storm that was passing through Atlanta. Um, again, uh, we, we knew it was coming. Um, I was working on um, Avengers Infinity War at the time, and uh, I, I knew it was going to be stuck at, stuck at my friend's house for a couple days. So I got some clay and I just started this. Hmm. Let's see. And this, then this other one is another scary one. Yeah, that's uh, that's my take on uh, Marvel's uh, Michael Morbius, uh, which is actually there's they they made a film and it's coming out one of these days. Um, so Morbius was the he's he's the living vampire. He's kind of. Again, he's from the, the Marvel uh, Midnight Sun series, kind of a dark pseudo hero. I don't know. Kills bad guys. Mm. <laughs> now, what did you do for Infinity Wars? Oh, um, I was mostly, um, well, I was uh, I was mostly background, but um, what that what that meant in a film like that was uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, shooting, you know, the Wakanda scenes. So, mm. even though some of these guys were, again, were were uh, background players, a lot of stunt players, but we had to cover up any tattoos they might come in with, and then put the tribal tattoos over them uh, before they, you know, before they can be seen on camera. And there were a lot of them, I remember. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot. I mean, it, uh, on, on any any uh, Marvel film, the the second unit, the, the stunt unit. I mean, that that's where that, it's. You, you would never know you're on second unit. It's it takes a, it takes a, a village just to do second unit, and um, and shooting those fight scenes takes as long as well. It, it actually takes much longer than the live action. It takes a, a lot more time to set up. Uh, wire gags and so on anytime you're putting somebody at risk you have a credit for alien hunter uh what did you do on that one Be and I, the title's familiar i think i've seen it but a long time ago 
Um, I believe it's like in the early two thousands, right? For yeah, yeah. So um, again, this is when I was working for Tony Gardner, and yeah. uh, my friend Lilo Tavo designed uh, an alien makeup uh, for Doug Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. And him and I applied. It was a pilot. Um, so it, it, I mean, it didn't get picked up, and I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it aired. To be honest, yeah, I I'm not certain if it did. Yeah. Uh, did you did you uh, work with that? Well, I guess you did, right? Doug Jones is pretty tall, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but what a nice guy. Um, uh, yeah, it was a full it was a full alien like makeup. So we had it. We had a cowl, a full head uh, cowl, and then a couple face facial pieces. Um. And like I said, um, my friend Lilo, uh, I mean, he sculpted and like designed the paint scheme, but him and I were doing the applications every day. In your career, other than maybe Doug Jones, I'm sure, who, what is the actor or individual that has stood out in your mind the most that you, uh, for good or bad, who is the one that when you think of your work, maybe you think fondly of? And you would maybe like to work again with them. I know that's putting you under. Yeah, I probably shouldn't even ask that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Not, I mean, I'm not going to go into who who I would rather not work with. That wouldn't be. Oh, uh, not that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's that just wouldn't be right on so many levels. Um, but there is there's certainly uh, plenty of actors I've really enjoyed working with, um, even if it was just in the short term. Um, Going going way back, um, I mean, one of the highlights of my career was working with uh, Martin Short on Mars Attacks. Yes, um, that was just it was such a huge honor for me. I mean, I grew up watching SCTV in Canada, and yeah, it was it was such a big deal. And I had it, I had to try so hard not to act like a geek in front of him. You know, like I was. A, you know his characters, Ed Grimley, and so I just it, it was it was so influential to me as a kid. Um, yeah, there I was. Look at that mane. <laughs> yeah. And those are the aliens from Mars Attacks, right? That was the uh, autopsy body. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, Martin Short was uh, definitely a standout, and uh, again, he you know. He couldn't have been nicer to work with. Um, in recent years, again, I mean, the Hunger Games cast. I can't, I can't say enough nice things about people like Josh Hutchinson and Jennifer Lawrence. Um, you know, Liam Helmsworth too. Just, just really nice, genuine people and funny, like just funny people to work with. You know, always make you smile, especially Jennifer, always making you laugh. Hmm. That's cool. Now, what is there a special upcoming movie that you may have heard about that you, that you would die for to do to be in to do some makeup for them, or oh. you just take what you get? Um, no, no. There's, I mean, there's certainly, uh, you know, I, I un unfortunately, I, you know, I don't get to, I don't, I don't get to pick which films that you know always come my way, but. Um, I, I would love to, uh, I mean, I'd always love to work on a Star Wars project. Um, might happen, who knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, the, I hear I hear that there's been some casting moves made in the new Highlander reboot. Um, I mean, for all I know, it's already shooting. I, I, you know, I don't keep my finger on the pulse of these things, but... Um, I would uh, I would definitely love to work on a Highlander movie if, if given the opportunity. Um, I would love to work on a Game of Thrones series uh, if if I ever had the opportunity. I'm trying. To, I actually just got my uh, UK passport recently, and uh, going for my Irish passport next. Um, can't hurt. No. You know, I have more options. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where they are on the HBO, but I understand that they did pick up the series, the mm -hmm. one about uh, Khaleesi's family. 
going back. The uh, Family of Dragons. Mm-hmm. I forget their name. The, and I understand that one is moving forward. The Targaryens? Targa- uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sounds about right. And of course, it's a prequel series. And uh, I, I don't know where they are on that because I just haven't been paying attention to that one. Yeah, because there was talk of I heard talk of like three different spinoffs. Yes. You know, so I, yeah, and I have no idea what's been green lit and where they're shooting. Yeah, there were three of them, uh, and uh, they narrowed it down. They finally chose one. It looked like they might have gone with two for the time being, but uh, no, just right now they're going to go with one. I don't know when they're, it's going to debut, but that is the last that I heard. But yeah, that would be it. awesome. I, I imagine, yeah. Uh, do you know where they were filming uh, Game of Thrones? Was it in? It was I, in Ireland, I, right, or Scotland? Oh, it, no, it was like four different countries. Right, they were in Iceland, right? Yeah, they, they, they you know, yeah, they had stuff in Ireland. They had, I, I don't, I don't even know. I like, I, you know, some stuff in Eastern Europe, and then they had there was, uh, there, there, there was a location for their, you know, tropical like desert climate. Yeah, yes. I, think it was, I think they filmed in Africa, if I remember right, too. Yeah, which part um, of... Uh, as a matter of fact, Alexander Sadig, who played uh, the Martell leader for the short while, they filmed it in Malta. I remember okay. that scene. And I just remember because, of course, he was in DS9. Star Trek is a personal favorite. And uh, it was at the Presidential Palace. But I don't know if they were able to film inside. But it was in Malta. And uh, they have quite a bit right there in the Adriatic, the former Yugoslavia, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, they did some of that stuff over there. Uh, Croatia comes to mind, but I'm not 100% certain. But yeah, Eastern Europe, wow. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're all over the place with the Game of Thrones productions. Yeah. They go where the background suits them or yeah. can well, be adjusted. Yeah. Uh, where they Maybe. can do the projects, yes. Did you watch Game of Thrones? Are you a fan of the series? Yeah, and you know, it took me a long time to get into it. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, you know, I mentioned uh, working with Nam- Natalie Dormer on uh, Mockingjay. Yes. Um, I didn't know her relation to uh, to um, Game of Thrones. I hadn't, I hadn't, I wasn't a Game of Thrones fan at the time that I worked with her. Um, but uh, after. Um, after Endgame, like I, I started watching the show, I, I I'd gotten a couple surgeries on my foot, and uh, spent a lot of time in front of the couch, and that was when I, I picked up Game of Thrones, and which is kind of great because I had six seasons to go yeah. through, and then and I think I believe the seventh was airing at that time, um, so it's kind of it was, it was kind of perfect timing in many ways. I just couldn't wait for uh, for the eighth season to come out. Well, I'm, I hope no one spoiled it for you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I mean, that was uh, – I caught it around the sixth episode. I forget what was going on in my life. And with HBO, was great because uh, at the time, uh, as they would play them, then they would go back into the preceding three episodes. So it was real easy to catch up. Mm. And uh, it was cool. I was hooked on Game of Thrones almost from the very beginning. Well, and I, I would. Impressed. I'll have to admit, though, after seeing the first five minutes of that film, I almost turned it off. It. I just went. This is going to scare me to death. Game and, of Thrones. Yes, Game of Thrones. The first five minutes with the uh, dead people. Um, oh yeah, is that White Walker bit? At the beginning? Yes, the White Walker yeah. stuff at the beginning, and that just about scared me. And the only thing that hooked me was the opening credits, and I thought that was the coolest opening credits. I had ever seen, and that put me on the show. Yeah, do you do you not like horror films? Um, they're not. A, I'm not a fan of them. So you know, but I love your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Are we horror, learning something now? <laughs> but, well, no. But uh, people that know me know that horror is not my, not not my strong, you know, like. Gotcha. But. I do like the makeup. I mean, as I said, when I saw you in person, I saw that. I was like, "Whoa, that is so cool!" So it, it is kind of the hunt for the good horror film. Um, as much as I want to enjoy 
the genre, um, yeah, it's hard to find a good one. <laughs> that's so, him, isn't it? It really yeah, is. That's, Freddy that's, that's from, that's on the set of Freddy vs. Jason. Wow. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name. I first... Uh, Robert Ingram. I knew of him, yes. Uh, I knew of him from V. Uh, yeah. Before he was Freddy Krueger, yes. Yeah. No, he had done a lot before, you know. I mean, you know, he, he was never, uh, or as far as I know, uh, like, never a lead. But he'd, he'd done a lot of work before. Yeah. Yes, he he's... Uh, Michael and I were having a conversation a while back about some people in Hollywood, how they'll, they may never be a lead. Maybe they may be in one thing, but they're always in Hollywood. A, a, a friend of ours, well, okay, I can't say friend, but someone who's been a friend to us over the years, uh, John Billingsley, I believe you know him, Dr. Flox from Enterprise. Oh. Um, yeah, he's been on three times. We're getting ready for his fourth visit, but this will be the first video visit. So we're, we're looking forward to that. He is, uh, I just tell him we're live, and that's it. An hour and a half later, when he's done, he's done. <laughs> he loves to absolutely entertain people. And oh, that's great. He, he, he's great. And uh, he's in so many movies. Uh, he was on True, I think it's True Blood and HBO. He was, that was a series. He was mm -hmm. in 2012. Lots of other stuff. But anyway, he's coming back. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, the makeup, they, the reason why I remembered it is because of the makeup that he had to wear uh, in Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's talked about it. It was no fun, but he had it better off than others. He only spent an hour or two in makeup, if I remember correctly. There are others in science fiction and other movies that can spend hours, right? Oh, yeah. But you know that better than I do. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, and and it can be, you know, it, it can be very tough on the actor. I mean, they, you know, being under all that rubber and glue, it'll, it'll get to you. It's it's, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's hot. Your skin can't breathe. You know, it's 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 not a fun way to to have to. It's not a fun thing to have to act through. So I completely. I, realize. Yeah, I I've seen when they have to create the mask. And where they're, you know, I guess the plaster, right? They're doing the plaster of the, the head. And they have to put two straws in their nose so they can breathe. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you saw one of these videos, and they do, and I've seen them. If you've seen video of, of somebody putting plaster on someone's face and straws up their nose, um, those are not working professionals. Those are students and people and, you know, artists who, who don't, who haven't been trained properly. Ooh. So we never put plaster directly, we never put a, like plaster of Paris on, directly on someone's face because plaster generates heat when it cures. And we never put straws up the nose because um, it distorts the nose. And, and, and even like just the plaster itself, like just the weight of it will, will change the shape of your face. So um, these are kind of old like art school methods that, um, which I went through. I mean, I did it in, in yeah. class. I did it before I learned how to do it properly. And these are in some big name movies that are, well, the, uh, the additional material. I've seen a lot of that within the yeah. last 10, 20 years. Wow. Well, what, what, what you're probably watching, if it's being done, if it's being done correctly, which usually it is, yeah. um, it's there. They're, we're using um, either either alginate, which is just a temporary like kelp based material um, mm -hmm. that then that's what we used for decades uh, for impressions because it's it's it sets like gelatin, like firm gelatin. It doesn't hurt okay. the skin. Um, nowadays, we use uh, we use primarily a silicone rubber. A, a skin, you know, a, yeah, a um, skin safe, um, durable rubber that doesn't doesn't dry out and shrink like alginate does. It's we you know, we end up with a permanent uh, mold that we can work with, um, but very safe and you know much more comfortable. It doesn't uh, silicone doesn't have to um, it doesn't have a thermogenic reaction. It won't heat up when it cures, and that's that's important to the process. I don't know how they do it then or now uh i am claustrophobic and the idea of only being able to breathe through two straws mm -hmm. i'd say okay you know what 
Uh, I thought I was right for the part, but yeah, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do it. No way. Wait, I've had that. I've had wow. that. Uh, I remember one guy, I'd, I'd already covered his head completely. And all of a sudden he starts panicking and he just starts talking. And he's like, um, can, can we can we take me out of this? And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, I, I guess I guess I'm I guess I'm a little claustrophobic. I go, I go, if you can wait a few minutes for this to set, I can peel it right off because right now it's just going to be a big gloppy mess. And he's like, oh, I don't know, maybe why don't you just t tell me a joke or something? And I started <laughs> telling him jokes and we got the life cast. And of course, he was he was breathing through his nose. We always work around the nose. Yeah. And and I left a little enough of a hole right here as I was smearing all this alginate all over him that he could keep talking to me. And the cast came out perfect. He wow. just he, he just needed he just needed to take his mind off what was going on. I guess people can do that. They just have those moments, right, where it's just something clicks or snaps or whatever, and they just need to get out. Wow. Yeah. Was, this, you, was this his first time or? That he had had something like this applied to him, or don't yeah, you know? he didn't. He didn't know. I guess you know he didn't fully. Or you know, the thing is, a lot of people. And I, I try to explain what they're going to go through, but um, sometimes people don't know they're claustrophobic until they have an ex a sensory mm. deprivation experience like this. You know, with your your ears getting covered and your eyes getting covered and then your mouth. To some people, that can induce panic. Yeah. Oh, I clearly understand that. I want to take a quick moment. I want to give an additional shout out and thank you for the likes. Tony Kanapka, Roger Peacock, Ola Tokayo, Jacob Hayes, Michael Bednar. And I believe we did get everyone else, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, Brady Dearden, Eric Ogle, Randy Landers, Victoria Avalon, Maggie Sisti, and Peter Gama. Appreciate the likes, folks. And uh, we're good. So we're well into our second hour now, ladies and gentlemen. This is Monday Night America. We have Connor McCullough on with us and uh, we're learning a great deal and seeing his work wow we thank him for allowing us to <laughs> go through all of his material and uh, be able to talk about it Connor yeah. what do you want us to highlight or talk about specifically right now um you know I I don't have you know again by the nature of you know how, how I get my work um, I can't really you know promote anything that isn't out <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, I, I, there's nothing for me to promote. Um, I'm happy to, um, you know, walk you through the studio and, you know, talk about, you know, anything that, that catches your eye, um, if you like. That'd be cool. Oh, it's an airbrush makeup I did for Outcast. Um, okay. this girl had been touched by one of the, uh, I think one of the, one of the Outcast. Um, they, they, they never, they never fully explained the lore. I guess we were going to learn more by season three. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was the after effects of, you know, one of these, uh, one of these outcasts touching her. Wow. Looks really cool. Now, um, you mentioned earlier about Natalie Dormer and mm -hmm. you were talking about the vines. These are the ones in this image, correct? Yes. Wow, it was so subtle. I noticed in the movie, but now that you mentioned it to me, I had to uh, take a look at it myself. Really well done. Really good yeah, stuff. Uh, and I, 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 I had nothing to do with this makeup. Um, that was uh, that was Neal. but um, it was interesting because obviously, like Natalie had to shave the side of her head for this, yeah. and um, in public, uh, you know, there was no. You know, this was all under wraps. So, she in public, she would just throw her hair over the other side and try to hide that that you know that she's uh, done this to herself. Mm, yeah. Well, I don't think that got out, which is really cool. Yeah, and well, she never she never left uh, you know the film set with the vine tattoos on either, of course. Right. Oh, yeah. There was another image, which is a scary image, and I know it would be to Michael. I don't know if I have a chance to upload it yet, but it is someone. Wow, I'm, I'm going to find that image right now. I apologize, I haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, Michael, would you go ahead? In the meantime, I'll get that image. Well, it would be cool if you wanted to start your tour of the uh, sure. 
your studio yeah. just to... yes that would be great all right so um i'm just in my office right now and um there's there's really not a lot to show here i i originally wasn't going to have an office down here um this was uh well anyway long story short uh, when i started doing tattoo work i needed to be able to I need to be able. I need to be able to work down in my studio and run up to the computer and print something off, and then go back into the studio and so on. Um, so I ended up just you know getting all my printer set up um, down here in the shop. And oh, and up there's my the cue cards from Face Off. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, That's they were, cool. <laughs> they were kind of to uh, to give those to me. So. Um, Let's see. Down here is uh, just well some of my stuff. Um, here's the very first uh, guitar I made, um, and it's. I'm sorry. I'm holding it just using my iPad here, but um, you're okay. Yeah, you can see. Um, darn it! <laughs> Did I lose you? Yes. Um, we lost you. You're still live you're, with you're, us. Yeah, you still got the voice, but yeah, the image is gone. Okay. Oh boy! I do. I believe I did upload an image. Uh, okay, well, actually, we lost him now. Now we lost him. Okay, so hopefully he'll be joining us in just a few moments, and uh, I'll see if I can upload the image. There he is. Here he comes. All right, you're back. <laughs> all right, sorry about that. So, Not at all. Yeah. Um. Again, another another one of my uh, new hobbies during shutdown was making guitars. Uh, I've got another one over here. I made. Um, oh, wow. And I just, you know, I, I, something I saw online or something, and I just thought, well, maybe I can do this. Um, here's a you know, Confederate zombie. I mean, these, these are displays I've just got sitting in the bottom of my office. And of course, you saw the sea creature, mm -hmm. and you saw Morbius and, before. And the one to the left of it was from Mars Attacks, right? Oh, yeah, that was just my little a little bust I made yeah. years ago. <laughs> it's still cool. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, up on the wall, like I've got these, you know, the, um, that, that makeup we talked about, the faceless makeup mm -hmm. and, uh, torn throat, uh, we used that on Constantine for an episode. Um, over here this is another makeup from the, that move, that faceless movie. This is just a guy with a lot of tumors and crazy thing about this makeup design was that, um, it was taken from a real, uh, uh, I don't even know what that condition is, but um, it was, uh, yeah, I, I went straight off a picture for that one. Um, and through here, I mean, just right now, this is a good room. I'm just packing and uh, mold shelves are all back here. Nothing crazy, nothing exciting. Here's my art room. Wow. And I'll just come around and see yeah. what... That's not enough stuff, Connor. You need more stuff. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm working oh, on. There's, yeah, there's the sculpture back there. Yeah, the there's, the, there's the torture chair, you know. And, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. They, oh, so I can show you the back of this we talked about. Oh, yes. okay. Oh. So, so yeah, you can see the Freddy snake there. And then a little figure I'm working on, it's supposed to be Patricia Arquette. And if I take that out, you can see like, kind of, kind of like the, the you know, with the chest of souls, the whole inside is all like screaming faces, yeah. and there's a little, a little boiler furnace in there. The beauty of it is, you can see that clearly from right here. It's oh. clear. Wow, Connor, oh, great. that's a wonderful job. Thank dare you. Dare I say? Jeez. And let's see over here. Um, uh, Tony something. says Connor's work is amazing. Really love the Confederate zombie, the Morbius, Freddy, and the sea creature. Yeah, you got a thumbs up from Tony Kanaka. Thank you, Tony. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is a figure I've been working on forever. It's just been down in the studio. Every once in a while, I get to do a little bit more on it, and um, it's kind of a like a elven warrior princess type thing. Um, <laughs> So here's here's the head, um, and 
This was actually, a, this wasn't from scratch. Um, when I first started this project years ago, it was it was going to be something else. I, I don't even remember what, what the purpose of it was. It was just, a, just another art piece. But um, I'd started with a life cast of a friend of mine named Perry uh, when I lived back in Charlotte. And then over the years, I've just kept doing more to it. Um, I mean, she's still in there, but, you know, I've made a lot of changes. And um, one of these days, I'll get it finished. Um, here's another zombie. Uh, again, I sculpted this guy year, like, like I, I sculpted this when I was still teaching, like, like 11 years ago. And it was just one of those pieces I never got a good copy of for myself. So um, I just cast this one up a few weeks ago, and I mean, he's only got like three colors on him so far, just a couple washes of kind of a death purple, a death green, a little bit of kind of blackish brown, but uh, I haven't even started airbrushing him yet. Hmm. That is impressive. And yeah, and there's just, I mean, there's just shelves of like makeup supplies and I like to sometimes just watch TV while I'm sculpting or listen yep. to it. Um, here's a little chimp I sculpted in the 90s, a baby chimp. That's, uh, sorry, the lighting's terrible. It's actually clear. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, we, we um, see it clear. And, and then on this side... Um, now, I oh, just very quickly, Connor, I noticed on the wall just behind you to your left on the inside, you have a Trivious Man up there, right? Or the human body? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you obviously you do this for the work. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I have uh, actually a really awesome. Um, there's this figurine I got from, uh, I think it's like these guys in Australia. You may have seen this one around. It's pretty amazing. Oh. Okay. Wow. It's so detailed, and um, there's obviously like, this helps you in your job, right? Yeah. This one's got like magnetic magnetic joints on it, and uh, it's, and it's just I mean it's just beautiful. Wow. Mm. And then I've got a little female version as well. Uh -huh. Wow. So yeah. As stuff and you can see like all, all this reference material it's all been for for that that figure yeah wow that's impressive that's, that's that's cool and i just you know i keep pictures of you know just stuff that inspires me just anything that i think looks cool um i'll print it up and stick it up on the wall use it for inspiration down the road uh, so this is the mold top. This is just where all the dirty work goes on. Um, so, you know, power tools and sanding and vacuform and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, oh, and then in there's the, uh, the silicone room. Um, it's not finished yet. I haven't even put a ceiling in that room yet. Um, <laughs> and it's a mess. It's a mess because I just finished a few, a few things and uh, I haven't had a chance to clean up yet. No, but that is cool. That's uh, that is awesome. That's a nice playpen, Connor. Thank you. It's uh, wow. and, and I mean, my my assistant Brad and I built this whole thing. It was um, it was nothing but uh, wood frames. Yes. When when I bought this place, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, got all the electrical done professionally, and you know, found these great lights and epoxy floor and well, we did all the drywall ourselves and i just threw paint all over it sure so it's yeah it's, it's and it's been great because it's, it's just my you know it's the place i want to be creative in of course wow so how, how long has it taken you to get where you are now it's like what two years three years right down there well i spent i mean i've, I've been at this uh, address for coming up on four years um you know i spent i spent sorry i Not spent a, a, a solid um six months building this place out and uh and then since then it's just whenever i get the gumption whenever i feel like doing a little bit more drywall or 
working on the ceiling or the lighting, whatever it needs. But, um, you know, it's, I did reach a, uh, a saturation point where I just had to stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, that's cool. Yeah. Are, right back. Are, are you one that you're good with the space or you would, in a perfect world, you still need more? Um, I actually want to downsize. Um, oh, okay. And by downsize me, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to make this shop smaller. Um, but uh, I've been uh, I've been slowly but surely uh, getting rid of a lot of my mold storage. And uh, I want I just want to get to a point where I can turn that into another room. Um, maybe not a workspace, maybe just a fitness room. Maybe, maybe nothing, maybe just a finished room with like finished walls um, until, until I know what I want. But, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I, as much as I love this business, um, I don't know how much longer I'll be in it. You know, I, I, I love to create and I'll always create, but, um, I don't know if I need all the mold storage anymore. I don't know if I need all these old molds from different films that never get reused. So yeah. just trying to consolidate a bit. Oh. I, I'm, I'm assuming competition is fierce out there for what you do, I'm assuming. Um, I mean, I suppose it is. Um, I, I mean, I don't mean to sound nonchalant about it. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm sure it's it feels more fierce for some than others um, and it's not that uh, it's not that I have producers beating my door down um, but I there's there's so much work yeah there's there's so much work in Georgia and um, and again I you know I get calls by you know my you know colleagues in other states too so um, there's always enough to go around it seems and I couldn't always I couldn't always say that, mind you, but these days in Georgia, it seems like there's plenty to go around. There is, isn't there, Connor? Because of all the new streaming services, they're just adding so much material. I mean, Netflix is spending ungodly sums of money on new programming, as is Amazon, and now the uh, Peacock. I I don't know. I haven't followed up, but. I imagine they're ramping up some material as well, and HBO, Disney. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness! I mean, this is in addition to the regular television that we've known. It's it's. Yeah. I can imagine the opportunities are out. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Connor. No, I was going to say the, the last the last thing I recall doing that was network was probably Constantine. No, no, actually, I shouldn't say that. I probably, in, uh, all the time I spent in Vancouver, I know I did several different oh, X-Files and and um, Twilight Zone. And, oh, you uh, did? You worked in the Twilight Zone? Well, again, um, well, this would have been working for Bill Terazakis. Um, right. When I was, when I'd be working with him, I could I could be doing stuff for any, any number of shows. So, um... I know there was an episode of Twilight Zone where they had the they brought back the aliens from the uh, to serve man episode from the sixties. They yes. did a whole ep they did a whole episode where they brought them back. So I I applied one of those makeups. And oh. there was there was there was a group there was about four of them I think. Um, and then yeah, various various gags for X Files and. Um, Resident Alien did some stuff for that, um, and again, I'm I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure there's no credit for any of these. It was mostly uh, mostly shop work or day playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, sixty to seventy percent of the stuff that you're mentioning, it's not on your IMDb. <laughs> no, I I know, and that's. I, and, and and if I wanted a credit, you know, I, I could certainly seek it out. I could I could certainly uh, try to list some of these. Um, I mean, I know what I did. Right, and <laughs> not only that, but the I'm sure many of the powers that be know what you've done as well. 
Oh, right. And again, especially when it's when I'm working for, you know, somebody else's company, um, you know, credits are completely, you know, um, it's it's random. It's, you know, it, it, it might happen. Usually doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, how long do you have with us, Connor? Do you, do you need to get upstairs or anything or? Um, yeah, uh, Connor, I do apologize. We yeah. did not ask you. Yeah, because I was going to And <laughs> you know uh, unfortunately, uh, this program, myself as a host, it's known as the gauntlet. Many other guests have referred to this as the gauntlet, having to get through it. So we'll go two hours. I'll, I'll make the guests suffer. <laughs> uh, but we did five hours on Friday, five and a half hours. I'm trying not to remember that, Roger. Yeah. Well, hey. um, I'm I'm uh, I'm happy to stay on if there's something you want to chat about. Um, you know, it's up to you. I've uh, I've I've uh, shown you about all I've got in the shop. There are definitely a few more I would like to ask about. Do you, Michael? Uh, yeah, I probably do too. But you go with yours first. Uh, I found the one that I was talking about. Uh, oh, okay. This good. one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so that was for. Uh, was originally shot for an episode of Amazing Stories, and oh. the the episode never aired. Oh, right. So so it was not included in the series package when it was released, and um, did they not finish filming or some other the, reason? There there was issues with miss uh, with uh, not having enough footage, and by the time they were getting around to um, releasing the series, uh, my understanding is that um, trying to get the there was a lot of children in that episode, and they felt like they weren't going to look the same anymore. Um, so trying to do pickup shots wasn't going to work, so they scrapped the episode. That that's my understanding. That would sound about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was a uh, this was a boogeyman, and and we, we I was told from the get go that he would be primarily well he'd be almost a hundred percent CGI, but they wanted this physical representation on set, so they hired a contortionist, and I made this uh, you know the, the hands and this combination chest head prosthetic that he was able to just pull on hmm yeah just from what we see the tilted head having it covered up it's a frightening image mm -hmm. it's boogeyman yeah yeah so when you say the amazing stories but it's with cgi am i the i think of amazing stories as the first time steven spielberg did it back in the 80s it's not correct no, this was a uh, a series reboot. Uh, it's recent, huh? It came out last year, I believe, and yeah. um, I'm thinking it, it's on one of the platforms. It wasn't network. It was it was um, it was either Hulu or Amazon or something like that. Hmm. Oh, Amazon. Yep, in 2020. Yeah. I think they. Yeah, I think only what like five episodes made it. I think there were supposed to be six. It's funny because I have this on on Amazon and I haven't seen it myself. Uh, let's see. I guess five episodes, yeah. But I can only imagine how much of it was due to uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, this was all pre-pandemic. It was. Okay. Yeah, we, we shot it before, before there was any such thing as uh, COVID-19. Um, I did worry there is another episode that I made a, a dead body in a casket. And um, there's a scene where this girl sees herself dead, you know, or sees herself at her own funeral. Yeah, I have that image. I'll have it up in about a minute right now. Okay. I'll go to that one right now. I did see that one. Uh, here we go. I have it uploaded. This one, yeah. Yeah. There you go. And okay. I... Go ahead. No, you go ahead, sir. 
Oh, I, I I actually I forgot the actress's name. Um, but uh, I mean, it's I can't remember if it was like a you know a dream sequence or what the uh, what the situation was. But yeah, she comes in and and uh, runs up to her own casket in a church, and you know can't believe what she's seen. Your work is just absolutely outstanding. There's uh, another image where you were working on someone's throat. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Ugh. So so on Outcast, um, there were several uh, several times where I was I found myself on set sculpting prosthetics for the next episode, uh, or or for that episode, and um, and this was one of those uh, this was one of those times. Um, I had a you know a quick you can see like like I have a quick stone cast if, if I'm still working in stone you you know it means I basically had no time and, <laughs> uh, and yeah sculpted it on set and then the application was actually done by Megan Arford and she did a great job. That is cool. Uh, there's this one I can only imagine who they're for. All right. <laughs> um, I know the, the the upper left. Those ones were for uh, it was for a movie called Cold Storage, and now he wore the veneers throughout the whole film. Um, the lead the lead uh, one of the leads um, is Nick Cersei, I believe. Um, so he wore those throughout the film, but that particular set, um, you can see uh, like some damage above the uh, upper right front tooth. Um, it almost looks like a it just looks like a sore. Yes. So what that was was a uh, it was a gag. His gums had to bleed. Um, he's they were doing a shot where he's in his bathroom mirror and he's trying to clean his teeth with a straight razor. And ah. he, <laughs> he he accidentally cuts into his gum line and it starts bleeding as he's cleaning his teeth. Yeah. Wow. Good times. Oof. It's what the script required. <laughs> yeah, and the the, uh, the set below um, that lower um, lower uh, palette there is yeah. um, it's a vomiting rig from um, a movie I did called Jezebel. And so, so if you can imagine, you know, she puts that she puts her teeth in, and she wore teeth. Uh, the character wore. She's a ghoul, so she wore these teeth all the time. This particular rig has a tube that comes out, you know, came out the right side of the mouth. So camera has to be on the left side so you don't the plumbing. And and we fired a lot of black slime through it so she could look like she's vomiting up swamp water. So okay, I okay, I I got all of that, but the actor doesn't have that in their mouth, right? Or they do? Yes. They do. The um, so oh, like I said, about gaggy, man. Jeez. Okay, so wow. so well, the one the lower the lower piece that I just described. Yeah. The the tube is actually coming out the corner of her mouth and going across the right side of her face. The, okay. The right. one from the one from cold storage. Um, if you go to the next picture that was on that that series, um, he had a little pump in his upper palate that he could depress with his tongue. So that was actor operated. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to your uh, your page for that. Give me a quick moment. It it is on your okay. Yeah, here we go, uh, folks. We're gonna go straight over to his page right now. We ask you to bear with us, and uh, there we go. And uh, I think this is it. Yeah. Oh, let me get rid of this image. And here it is. So this is on your Instagram page. This yeah, is what you're talking about. Wow. So it's just a really simple pump that I actually got it from a uh, a children's toy. I, I literally went to the toy store looking for something that a little a little squeeze ball. Oh and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I and I found it. And uh, and that's you can see the the bloodline, the tubes over and in front of uh, and feeds into the the gums. Of that of uh, mm. that here. Wow, that is cool. And uh, there are okay, yeah. 
Oh, that that was the video. Huh? Yeah, unfortunately, we, we don't get sound, though, but we did show this image, and you showed it to us live, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, your image, and folks, for everyone watching, there's a link down at the bottom to his Instagram. It is unbelievable. There's so much more imagery right there. Um, there's a sculpture that you did as well. I believe it's uh, right here. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's actually a, a life cast. Um, the actor's name, uh, Rodrigo. I'm not going to remember. Um, okay. But uh, it was a movie called um, uh, oh, Project. Darn it, it'll come to me. Uh, it was a Netflix movie with uh, Jamie Foxx and um, Project Power there it was called project power and um, this scene is where uh, uh rodrigo's he's kind of the bad guy um he gets uh well he holds his hand up and gets a shotgun uh to the hand and it blows his fingers off so um again this was um a project uh that mike marino was department heading and um he needed this done and he uh he always calls on me to do his 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 gags um, so, uh, he actually sent Rodrigo's hand cast to me and, uh, I built that here. That is cool. Michael, I want to ask him about this. I want to go back to the page on, uh, on Instagram. This was your first one, right? You were mentioning that while you were, uh, well, last year, right? You started doing this. It's your first one, huh? That, that's the second one. Okay, um, that was just a uh, uh, yeah the Telecaster um, design uh, style body, and I just used colored epoxies to create the look. Wow! So you're doing this for yourself? Are you hoping to maybe put these on uh, no, out for sale right. or anything, or is it just for yourself? Um, I would sell them. Um, I was going to show. I would tell them if I get an offer. It's just something I haven't really put it out there um, okay. as as a sale item. But um, I mean, I sad truth of the matter is I don't play. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but you're I just, I, um, so this was the yeah I, this was the first like the first ones I saw online that that got me was these river they call them uh, uh, river guitars because it's got this epoxy river going through it. Right. So I just, um, you know, I, I uh, routered out a deep channel through the guitar, through the guitar body and uh, ran lights into it and filled it with epoxy. Hmm. That is sweet. Anyway. But uh, not a huge market for custom guitars, apparently. So uh, yeah, again, uh, I, I did make uh, I did make one uh, on a consignment a uh, commission last year. That was cool, but yeah, not a lot of people asking for custom guitars right now. Yeah, right now everyone's watching uh, Netflix and uh, everything else until they get back to work, right? I guess so. During the COVID, when you didn't have work and you were just at home, you mentioned you saw Game of Thrones, right? Or no, 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 no. That was before. Uh, right. What What were you watching during this uh, during this pandemic? Uh, um, we actually we, we had a few different themes going. Um, we knew we were going to be like you know keeping ourselves busy, so we went through our '80s phase. We went through. Uh, you know, horror films, you know, like zombie movies and, you know, movies like Fright Night, like any any 80s sci-fi horror film, uh, Life Force, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Um, went through all those. And then, um, and then uh, Megan and I got, um, we got addicted to um, this... <laughs> this line of movies from a, a, a deceased filmmaker named Andy Sidaris and Andy made these made these um, low budget like 
sexy spy movies in the late 80s and 90s um a lot of it like i think it was like made for you know cinemax essentially but um they're all kind of like james bond style movies but but the women are the heroes but of course there's tons of nudity and so on because they're essentially exploitation films okay um so we we got addicted to those we've watched like there's like 12 of them and uh <laughs> we've watched them all like three times um yeah, so, yeah i was uh a lot of that and um but of course yeah and a lot of finding stuff to do kind of creating new hobbies for myself le learning how to build these guitars took forever so you've done two or three now i've done three and i'm actually on a fourth oh wow hmm. yeah it's uh, it's on my instagram it looks it kind of looks like a candy cane it's you know red and white epoxy and uh that's that's going to be the next one in time for the holidays don't know that I'll get it done. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, I don't have an image of your logo, but I believe it was... Oh, it's right behind you. Duh. That is so cool, man. Oh, did my you friend... have that done, or did you do it? <laughs> no, my, my friend Tony Elwood created that. He's um. That's a sweet logo. Tony, Tony's a very talented guy. He, uh, he, he does a lot of graphic design. He's got his own company in Charlotte. And uh, he also directed the first film I did when I moved to North Carolina, the, that one I mentioned, Cold Storage. Yes. Um, he directed that. He's you know, he's directed commercials and stuff, and when he's not directing, he uh, does graphic design. Is there anything... You said that you weren't sure how much longer you were going to stay in the business. Is there anything in particular you want to go into, or are you just going to wait and see what happens? Um, it, it's not that I want to change careers. Um, it's uh, like I said, I do. It's, it's not that I don't enjoy what I do um, because I, I, I do like it. Um, I think uh, I think there's just other things I want to do in my life um, before, you know, but while I'm still while I'm still able to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had a. Well, I, I, without getting into detail, like a few years ago, I had a skydiving accident and I thought I was fine. And, and then it just like my ankle just wasn't healing. And then I got surgery and then I got another surgery on the ball of my foot. And then I got a surgery. I had, they had to go back in again because they didn't do it right. So I've had like three surgeries on my foot. And after limping for a year straight, um, I started to realize like, I'm not always going to be able to do all the things I want to do. And, you know, if I want to go backpacking in Nepal or something like that, like, you know, w whatever that, whatever it may be, I, I need to get on it. And, um, yeah. and so, so yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily mean quitting the business. It just means, you know, not doing 70 hour work weeks and taking every job that comes along. Mm-hmm. Just when Game of Thrones comes around, just in, then in, you just do that. In working and enjoying life more. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all. No, I hear you. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah, I get it. My tiny field, I am much older, and I am done. I probably have one of the best jobs in the world for security, but I'm done in 2024. I'm going to stay working part-time from January to April mm -hmm. and do my best to grow my business and just do things that I've not been able to do. I get it, Connor. And uh, yes, uh, you know, as someone who is much older and is not as young, yes, do it while you can. There are some things that I probably won't be able to do now. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I should have done that as a young kid. I'm not going to do it now. So I get that. Yes. Yeah, and and yes, yeah, sometimes it takes a little, you know, a little kick in the pants, you know, to to realize, you know, we, you know, the time is limited. <laughs> um, so it's it's uh, yeah, and it's not, you know, it's not a it's not a negative thing. Um, I think it's it's very I think it's very healthy. Um, I have actually turned down a couple jobs uh, recently because it would take me away from my dog for too long. 
I, I, I want to spend time with my dog. So, <laughs> so if, um, you know, if I'm going to be out of town, so be it. But I probably, you know, it, but maybe not, you know, maybe not the six months out of town type gigs anymore. Um, you know, it gets a little bit taxing when you're away. I've got everything, you know, I've got everything I, I, I've worked for here. So, you know, I, I don't have to, I don't have to be gone for six months just to survive. I hear you. Michael, do you have any other questions? Um, I don't think so, but um, I'm trying to think of it was another picture that I wanted. Go back and look at this again, see which one, if I missed one. Um, well, I think it was like, was it this? Was this a ser this was this from one show or I can't remember this looks yeah. familiar and I can't remember why it looks familiar. Yeah, those were from my first um IMATs in Los Angeles. And uh this is a perfect example of um of me taking on way too much for one for one weekend of showing off. <laughs> oh wow. Uh I you know, I was asked to do. I was asked to do my first IMATs. So this is you know right off the heels of Face Off, and I was working with V Neil on the first Hunger Games, and um, you know they wanted me to to work the show, and and you know her her sponsors wanted me to you know do makeups at their booth and all this, and um, I spent all my free time, all my you know weekends and days off creating these um to uh to apply at the show mm. and so so again you know like i said i try to i try to do something innovative when i can so on the you know on the right is this you know it's supposed to be a uh well it's supposed to be a horned owl but without the without the large eyes it just looks like a bird um makeup but it did have like a mechanical hinged jaw that was actor operated and um and then i yeah had to hand lay all these feathers a bit of a nightmare um mm. the uh the the dog makeup was it was intended to be a a demo on using a flocking gun on prosthetics but um the flocker I had purchased wasn't working, so I just um, it, it just wasn't that makeup. It just became a just a dog makeup. Uh, and then the uh, the the sea creature makeup on the on the other side, um, it didn't. Uh, it had it actually had rows of neon lights running through it to be kind of a bioluminescent makeup, but on the trade show floor you just couldn't see it. because of the lighting there or yeah it, yeah that it was just too too bright and the neon like you just the, you need to be in you need to be at least shaded if not you know in the dark to really see it so um yeah so most people didn't really get to get, get to see how much I, I actually put into making that work but uh it was still very well received oh yeah Yeah. Was there I any? See, oh, go ahead, Roger. I was just going to comment on that image. I can see that it clearly is an owl, but yeah, the eyes are small. It still yeah. looks good, though. It doesn't look like a regular bird. It, it, it well, it, I mean, the colors. I guess it it reads more like a hawk. Um, but uh, again, it's you know these are these these are experimental. <laughs> wow. My claim to fame is growing up, I could build spaceships out of cardboard and tape and glue, man. That was about it. Oh, yeah? yeah that, that was it, man. I'm thinking of doing that again just because. But that's it. What you do is absolutely amazing. Well, thank you very much. I, I do. And like I said, I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, whether, oh, it whether, whether I'm in the business or not, I will always sculpt. I'll always create things. Uh, and, you know, if that means... That means another guitar, so be it. Um, but uh, I mean, I'll I'll always, you know, have a workshop and do stuff. I can't, you know, I can't just walk away from that. 
Yeah, we are. You are. You are very talented, Connor. And as I said, when I when I saw your work in person, I was I was just blown away. As I said back back Con Carolinas, I had a table right across from you, and I was looking at your stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, last week Michael mentioned you. He says, "Hey, I know someone who's an artist." I'm like, yes. Why are you asking me? Ask. <laughs> and I think the turnaround was, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it didn't take very long. I do want to thank you for that. It was just a matter of getting the correct date and time, and it didn't take very long, Connor. I want to thank you for that because no, that was fair. My pleasure. It's uh, it's it's good timing. Um, I literally like I just got back from Savannah a few days ago, doing a quick yeah. gig there. I've, I'm already booked on my next show, but I, I actually have like two weeks off before I have to go. So I'm just at home doing my own thing right now. Oh, that is cool. Well, I'm glad that did work out because uh, for us, it's a holiday. Well, for him, it's the eternal holiday because he's uh, retired now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky I'm on the West Coast because whenever we interview, unfortunately, predominantly, we're interviewing. Oh, well, forgive me. I'm looking West. We're interviewing almost everyone on the East Coast, and I'm sorry that it's late, Connor, but I want to thank you for that. We did start early, but it still is late, and you're beyond a team player. Oh, well, that was my pleasure. It was fun. And I thank you for that. Uh, it was fun, too. We, we got to see a lot of stuff, learn uh, a lot of stuff that you had done that I had taken for granted. I mean, just focusing on that one scene of... Uh, you know, uh, oh my God, not Mockingjay, but uh, oh, Hunger Games, the first Hunger one. I, I know that scene very well. It's really cool. And it's neat to have that connection that I know someone that actually did that. And uh, knowing that you're also involved in Mars Attacks, I've always had a personal theory about that movie. Had it debuted before Independence Day, it would have done quite a bit better. It's just, it was timing and everything. Because after Independence Day, which was a fairly serious movie, mm -hmm. then you got the comedy, which was terribly entertaining. It just didn't hit well. Had it been before Independence Day, my position is it would have done much better at the box office. It's it's so funny. Like, with... It's such, such a mixed bag. Like, it wasn't... The film wasn't marketed well. I... I Nobody understood, nobody that I knew understood the, the marketing campaign when it came out. The first, uh, the first posters and billboards were just, uh, well, the, the teaser poster was just the, the series of alien brains, right? Yeah. And, then, and then when the movie came out, they put up, uh, there was like a billboard in Hollywood of Jack Nicholson and Glenn Close sitting up in bed. That's right. I was like, "Yes, what, what are you, what are you doing? What, no one's going to know what this is about." Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, and and I really enjoyed the movie, but you know, I also understood the criticisms. Um, you know, it just it, and yeah, I guess it just didn't have uh, a broad appeal. Uh, I enjoyed it. it. It's a shame because it did not have a broad appeal, but I, I believe it's just because. Uh, it, it was a matter of timing, and I forgot about the advertising campaign. <laughs> there was no advertising. Wow. Okay. It was a quirky advertising campaign. I yeah. don't know what they had because I was in the theater. I saw that movie, and it was full, and there were laughs in the movie. And what was really cool about that movie was it was a throwback to Hollywood of the 40s and 50s and 60s. Where you had so many big names in one movie. Yeah, and it was like I saw, I saw the premiere, and um, if memory serves, I think I saw it at Man's Chinese in Hollywood, and um, that that scene where where they where the aliens land in Vegas. Oh and yeah, <laughs> shoot up the place. Yep. Right after that scene, this big crowd of teenagers in front of us got up and left. No. Oh. I I didn't know what I was like I I I, was, I, tr I couldn't figure out what they were reacting to but they weren't having when, it. When was Colorado um was that in 95 cuz the movie was in 96. 
I wonder if that was it. Um, you talking about uh, the the shooting? the shooting at yeah in Colorado? I forget when it was. Yeah, it could have been that. It might have been that. I I don't know. Um, yeah. you know, I I can't say anything to those kids because way off topic. I went to see Ice Age, you know, the the animated movie, and it's huh? funny. And I got so offended. Me, I this is the first time I tell anyone. I was so offended. When they're sliding through everything and then they say, iceberg right ahead. You know, it was a la Titanic. I was like, mm-hmm. that's not funny. <laughs> they're mocking, you know, the disaster. And that's like, I look back and I said, thank God I didn't share that with anyone at the time. That was so stupid. It was just humorous. But mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not saying those kids, I don't know why they got up and left. You never know. But, uh, yeah, well, obviously I- something set them off for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. You know, different generation. Um, I mean, my my dad took me to Blazing Saddles when I was eight years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think yeah. he wants to make movies anymore. Not not the way he wants to make them. Uh, no, and it's really amazing that, yeah, you just can't make a movie like that anymore. And but that movie actually resonates, man. Mel Brooks, jeez. Right. Yeah. You you cannot make a movie like but it's consistent <laughs> no, through all of his movies. You can't yeah. do battles now. No. Uh even his Life Stinks movie. You see that one where he's a, a millionaire and he's fighting against the other guy about getting a certain property in LA and he has he says, I can I can live thirty days on the streets of LA. Do you remember that one? I I remember the title. I don't know if I saw it. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> There's this one horrible scene. <laughs> There's this guy that they know, a uh, sailor who always wanted to make it out to the ocean. Well, he dies. He's an old man. And they have no way of getting... And they're in downtown L.A., by uh, the L.A. River. And they're like, okay, well, they can't make it to the ocean. So they're going to... They have his ashes. They're going to throw him out into the, you know, into the river. Mm-hmm. Well, as they're about to do it, they throw it out. And a wind gust hits them. And now sailors all over them. And they're like, oh. <laughs> bye sailor, bye sailor. They're patting themselves down. I was like, oh my god, it's freaking hilarious. And I'm not doing it justice. It's just damn funny. That's Mel Brooks. Yeah, he was great. Uh, yeah, and his was just a slapstick humor. You know, there's uh, just very quickly. Um, uh, which is the movie that did it for me? Uh, you know, Aliens scared me. I was. I was 17 when Aliens was out in 86, and then I was frightened by the thing, John Carpenter's thing, back in the 70s, right? It's when they're down in the South. It's 81. Thank you. I did not recall. All I know is that that movie scared the daylights out of me, man. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. Summer of 82, because I was 11, and that was uh, like poltergeist the thing 82 and, was a phenomenal and, year for movies man and i think well I, and i think well, i think american werewolf had come out in 81 but what a time uh yeah from the summer of 81 well into 82 was just amazing there were so i i remember 82 so young man you and i are just like two years apart so we're I close turned, My, turned, mikey's the old guy <laughs> I turn uh, I turn fifty one uh, on uh, Friday. Happy birthday, young man! Happy yes. Birthday. Well, then then there it is. You and I are separated by about uh, a year and a half because I'll be turning fifty three in April. So yeah, it's about a year and a half, which is cool. Ooh, so old. we grew up at the same time, man. So yep. I find Conan. that see Conan I, in the theater. Uh, yes. Oh, I did. Yes. Amazing. It's such a good movie. Uh, yeah, I, I remember all of those, man. 82 was a wonderful year for movies. Oh, my goodness. That's, it was so influential, right? Yes. That's, that's that's really what got me started was the, um, again, like I you know never even conceived of doing makeup. And, um, let me see, you create a werewolf. Um, <laughs> um I have an unfinished werewolf, and it's it's on my Instagram. Oh, and there it is. Tony, check it out. I don't know if I saw that. I'm going to have to be checking it out myself. And 
Wow. Um, right. Anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, what what influenced you to yes get into oh making? yeah so no all, all I was gonna or say was before yeah. before I got my hands in clay and makeup um I I just drew depictions from films um I mean poorly but um I was I was always drawing fictional characters monsters and so on and I would see these movies and I would try to mimic the ideas from them and so on um. But again, you know, it's not like I could, you know, just rent the tape and and freeze frame it. You know, I didn't even have a VCR until I think I was like 13. That's <laughs> uh, about the time that <laughs> same thing for my brother. Oh, my brother gave us a like, by the way, Luis Noriega. Thank you, Luis. He used to go and uh, see all these movies. Oh my gosh, wh which one is it? The Night of the Living Dead, where it's in the late 70s, where the zombie. Gets his head chopped off by the helicopter blade. Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. They took me to see that movie. When they're in the elevator. Oh, they're eating the guy's guts. Oh, yeah. Good. That was the uh, the great Tom Savini. Um, yes, by the way. <laughs> and, and coincidentally, uh, another uh, another one of the uh, those one of those videos that I was like would watch over and over again trying to learn from was a yes. video made called Screen Greats. Um, I, I think it may have been like, I don't know if it was like produced by like Starlog or Fangoria magazine or something like that, but either way they did this, it was called screen greats and it was, it was all behind the scenes of Tom Savini, how he created, you know, those, those, uh, effects in the seventies and right up into, you know, like movie, like some of the, uh, he worked on a couple of the Friday the 13th films and, uh, oh, what else? Um, but you know, a lot, a lot of work in the uh, '70s and early '80s. Uh, creep show. Yes. Oh man, all the stuff that they did, and it was uh, there was no CGI back then, obviously, and it was all. The, do they call that practical effects? Yeah. Yeah, just amazing stuff, man. Um, look, look at some other movies that were '81 uh, Raiders of Lost Ark, um, and '82. Oh, wait, 81 and 82, they had the Dragon Slayer movie, right? And then they also had Clash of the Titans. Man, was, that was an amazing year and a half. Well, the, you know, the, the 80s is, is often referred to um, as the kind of the golden age of makeup effects. That was... Really? It's really when people like Dick Smith and Rick Baker and so on, um, like, really started to push the envelope and see like what could be done in camera because again if when digital wasn't an option and you know stop motion animation has its limits and just like makeup has their limits but we really didn't know what the limits of makeup were at the time and yeah. again if you go back to uh, that era i mean you go back a little bit further than um well like before american werewolf there was um well there was altered states and um and uh scanners you know scanners. oh are, yes you know with michael ironside's you know head or blown, blowing up people's heads and all the veins bulging out and squirting blood out of their face and arms and stuff i mean that is a lot of work uh it's i i don't know why but you said michael ironside and that took me to total recall <laughs> yeah the stuff that they did there that was that was some pretty crazy stuff, man. Uh, yeah, Rob Bottin got an Oscar for that. Yeah, I and, I have not seen the second Total Recall just because like I have not seen the second Red Dawn. Nothing against them. It's just there's some movies that I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, I I did see it, and I mean it's just uh, it's a different film. I mean you take the story and you know instead of. Like, you know, the, the first Total Recall really dazzled you with, with this eye candy, with these in-camera oh. effects, these amazing miniatures, amazing makeup effects, and so on. Um, yeah, the, the, the reboot didn't have all of that, and, and I, didn't, I didn't mind it. It was just a different film. It was a little more serious and not so much, not so much uh, bright lights and shiny things. Mm. You know, that was Corolco Pictures. You know all about them, what they were doing. Man, they were spending ungodly sums of money on these big pictures. 
Um, I know Karolko did uh, Terminator 2, or at least they were involved in it. Of mm-hmm. course, James Cameron. Uh, wow, with the Terminator. I, 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 I don't Jeez. know. I don't know the story behind Karolko Pictures. Um, um, there was these two producers that mm-hmm. were just spending ungodly sums of money and delivering eye candy in the late '80s and early '90s to us, but there were trouble. Eventually, uh, they eventually. I think one of them died, and they ran into financial problems. And one, two, or three of their movies just all went bust at the same time. So they just mm. didn't do very well. But they did some. Well, they did Total Recall. They did a uh, Terminator Two, uh, and they did others, big name, flashy uh, okay. movies. But uh, yeah, they're they're. It was interesting that after the sec, because I think they did Terminator Three as well, hmm. but when it failed, it failed. Did you know that the rights to the Terminator franchise were available in the two thousands for thirty five thousand dollars? No, that was crazy. Well, that was before Terminator Salvation. Okay. I remember. Pick it up, Roger. Uh, look, I didn't have the movie. I didn't have the money then. I don't have it now. Just for the rights of that one. But can you imagine there was that one time? Because I do follow the entertainment industry, and I remember that the offering was 35 and no one wanted to buy the wow. movie rights. Then someone eventually did, and then we got Terminator Salvation. That's crazy. You know, Tony, uh, uh, Tony's commented about Tom Savini's work in The Prowler. I did not see that, but he comments that it was epic. I didn't see The Prowler either. Oh, I don't remember. Okay. I'm guessing it's some sort of slasher movie. Tony? No? Yeah. It, it's um, about a 30 geez. second delay, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, he'll probably be able to tell us in a moment. Uh, we'll, we'll look it up. But beyond that, yes. Uh, well, there's, um, for, for film buffs, there is a great documentary out there. It used to be on Netflix, and it was taken down, unfortunately. But, um, I've got it on DVD. There you go, slasher. Um, yes. Um, there's this documentary. Oh yeah, called, I found it. There's, there's a documentary called um, "Electric Boogaloo," and it is a. Uh, it's all about. Um, it's all about Canon films. And and Canon, like, they were. I mean, they're kind of known as a bit of a schlock factory, right? But. Um, but I mean, they made so many films in the '80s that, like, and that was part of the problem was that they didn't even like they couldn't even keep track of, of their properties. They were shooting films all over the world, and um, and well, it eventually it eventually kind of ended them. Um, but it's a great documentary. It's really entertaining. I've actually seen that one, and I think Electric Boogaloo, and I think of. Break dancing in the eighties. <laughs> well, because they they made those two films, Breaking yeah. and Two, and and interesting story behind behind all of it. Really, is there's stories about their films, but um, yeah, you know, they didn't when they did when they did Breaking. They you know, from, from what they said in the documentary, they didn't even have a story at first. Like they were just shooting these guys dancing for a while until they figured out what this the was story? Be about. <laughs> Well, if you guys know Top Gun, they didn't have a story when they were when they started filming. Didn't know that. They didn't have an ending. It's crazy. I I don't I don't understand how some well they have faith in the producers that they mm-hmm. can do something that doesn't happen today, man. No way. With with the control these studios have, especially on these multi million dollar movies, it's just. No, they, they, uh, uh-uh. that stuff doesn't happen. I guess the only ones that could probably get away with that now, but they wouldn't do it would be mm-hmm. James Cameron and Steven Spielberg. They oh, yeah. could get away with, yeah. I did, um, back in 2008, I did a little horror film that, uh, like we, really? we started, we started with, it was a film called, um, Tooth and Nail. And, uh, we started without a script. Um, they, you know, there was a, there was a fund that was, uh, you know, some, some, some state funding that was going to run out at the end of the year. 
and they the only way they were going to get the funding was if they had a movie to shoot and uh and they did it um it's, i mean is everything <laughs> yep yep they did it i mean the the director mark young like he you know we we're on the phone constantly and he's like okay you know we're gonna need you know we're gonna need a bunch of like you know weapons and uh and i i started out before i even knew the gags i started just making molds of um of of different weapons that we knew we were gonna need you know to to kill people with in the film and <laughs> And I, I, dro I drove, I packed my whole shop up into a U-Haul and drove up to Philadelphia and we we hashed it out. You know, we'd have lunch together and just talk about, okay, what kind of gag are we going to do? What's going to happen to this person? How do we kill these people? And, uh, you know, so that, that was all I needed to know. And uh, they started shooting a film. And, you know, I mean, Mark, he's tireless. You know, he just, uh, <laughs> toot and nail. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, I, I know, I know it's supposed to be two, Tony. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it was, um, yeah, we kind of shot it on the fly and, uh, all in like an abandoned hospital in Philadelphia. It was this post-apocalyptic thing and, and it worked out. It was, you know, not, not a bad little, uh, horror film. That is cool. There, there's a, uh preview on it uh, i'm gonna have to check it out i i am i'm, I'm gonna want to see this again knowing that there's a connection to it i want to check it out that is cool because it is on prime video it's available so that oh is cool. well maybe i'll put it on tonight i don't think megan's seen that <laughs> uh yeah it's on uh let's see yeah it's available man Eight right. films to die for. That's very good, Tony. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, Lionsgate's marketing. They they grouped these movies together. They did a couple series, I believe. These eight movies cool. to die for. Yeah, two thousand and seven. Yep. The minute you gave me the date and the name, I looked it up. Said, yeah, there it is. That is mm -hmm. cool. Oh. I just look. I'm sorry. I just looked at time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I, I think we all did at this moment. But anyway, Michael, do you have anything else? No, I think I think that's about what I wanted to cover. I mean, but um, uh, we were going to end twenty minutes ago, and then I we know, just, oh, you did. yes, because <laughs> uh, there's always fine. something to talk about. And you know, Connor, I apologize that we weren't following a set, you know, a, a set interview process. But this no, is this was, this was very uh, this was very organic. Thank you. Yes, uh, that's that's what we, you know, you just like to do it. I want to tell you, um, I can now say this very well. I told Michael just before I went live, oh, God, dude, I'm not feeling it, man. And he says, dude, you want me to do it alone? I said, hell no. No, he responded to us fast. I'm in. <laughs> but I told him, I said, I don't know how long I was going to, I was not feeling well. But let me tell you, Connor, like Hollywood of old, I want to thank you. You took away uh bad feeling i had physically i'm just not feeling well you took it away for two hours and it's gone completely excellent then then my, my, was... my work my work is done here I, and i thank you connor and i mean that seriously because okay. if you guys can tell when i started out it just wasn't there man <laughs> <laughs> but uh this was fun and uh it was cool connor um uh i i i know you're busy you're doing other stuff but if at any time you wish to return, we'll probably ask you before, but anytime you want to return and talk about some other stuff in particular, any uh, particular projects in the past or stuff that you've just finished up that you can talk about and that you want to give play to, uh, it'd be my pleasure. Any project that you need, I'm sorry, you don't need from us, but we would love to help. You know, uh, dude, you're the professional. We're we're here because we're fans, but oh, at any I, time we would love I'm, to have you back. Oh, if I'm allowed to talk about it, I'm happy to. Hell yeah, that would be great and uh, it's absolutely awesome. So, all right. Well, thank you, Roger. Forward. Thank you, Michael. I oh, know this. This. Thank this you for coming. Great. Yes, thank you for spending your evening with us. Again, this is the most prized thing that we have as human beings on this earth since time, and you gave us over two hours, Connor. You're a good man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, uh, Mike. Yes. Thank you. We're, we're good. Uh, Mike, you want to take us away? Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. We're good. You want to take us away, Michael? Um, I'll let you take us away. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I know we have a lot of stuff planned, but now it's back. Oh, okay. so well, he's sure gone. That's why he needs to be here longer. And then you could have been better. Isn't but it funny we, though? Yeah, I know. He it, really, dude, he it really, amazing. yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, it's good. We, we have a lot of stuff coming up folks. Um, I know Mark Hildebrand is on the 13th. Bob Nisov is on the 15th. I know we have Tenelby an appointment scheduled. Uh, not an appointment, but we have an interview scheduled on Block Talk Radio on Wednesday. But I think I'm going to have to push it. Um, it is, he is he's well known in Florida. Stephen Mathis. Dr. Stephen Mathis. Uh, he is known as the Rock and Roll Shrink on the East Coast. Uh, he is right now scheduled for Wednesday, so please uh, check it out. That's on blogtalkradio.com forward slash NDB Media. So that one's going to be. Uh, I don't. Re- I think that one's going to go late. I think that one's going to be at eight or nine p.m. I have to verify Pacific time. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Bob Nisoff, author, uh, former Green Beret, and author of Spider Hole, will be on nine fifteen. And we have other guests. Um, uh, Miss Avalon is joining us, I believe, on the 20th. On the 20th, yes. Victoria Avalon. And, uh, yeah, Michael Jan Friedman is in October. John Billingsley is soon, as soon as we can just get the, the time. And we have other guests scheduled that are confirming all the time. What else do you have, buddy? Um, that's, I think that's about it. Um, as I said, we're confirming other guests, so that's what's really nice. We hope to get some surprises. Um, I haven't spoken to Josh from All Tower Media lately, but I know that they've got some uh, additional programming that they're doing. I, I don't know if they've gone to weekly now or if they're still doing every other week. Um, State of the Nerd, which is usually on Sunday night. And um, that one is about 7 or 7.30 p.m. on Sunday night. But you can find them at All Tower Media. Uh, the DA Verse episodes are still on on Wednesday and Saturday, I believe at 7 p.m. You can check those out on his author page. And um, yeah, I think that's it. There's a lot of stuff going on, folks. A lot of stuff. We don't even have enough time on the calendar. Uh, so I know we're good. Uh, we have others that are confirming almost daily. So once we do that, we'll we'll get back to you guys. All right. He's Michael Day. I'm Roger Noriega. We'll see you guys on the other side. Peace. <laughs>